This is Replicant Fish. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Welcome back to another episode of Fish Philosophy. That sounds slightly better than the last one. But I hope you're doing well, hope you're feeling well. Hope you've had a good week and enjoying the weekend. And in doing so, I hope you felt yourself in the process. And with that as well, thank you so much, 30,000 subscribers. Never thought I'd see the day. Thank you very much and give yourselves a round of applause. Because indeed you are awesome bastards. To the topic. The topic of why women nag and complain. Nag and complain you to death. And the fact is, that is actually possible. You see, as a child, I remember seeing movies, TV shows, seeing it as a joke almost, how they portrayed it as a joke. The joke being how a woman could nag her man to death. A wife, a girlfriend, but in a sense how many of these programs normalised the nagging and how funny it was and you'd hear the pre-recorded audience laughing to the programming of a nagging woman. Now admittedly, as a child, I was very naive. I thought, ha ha ha, it's just jokes, it's not real. <laughs> ah man. Then when you get older, then you start interacting with women on a more deeper level. It's then you see it for yourself. It's then you see it for your damn self. That's when sometimes you do learn to run. Run for your damned life. To flee. You see, let's look at it like this. A woman's nagging is control. See, the constant going on, the constant nagging, the arguments, the flipping out, the cold shoulders, the random bursts of nonsense, if you look at it in a psychological sense, it is a form of control. Because the thing is, what many men do, and yes, speaking of myself, what I have done, is to stop the nagging, they would just bend. They would bend their knee. They would succumb to her wants. Not all the time, but to a degree. Because in a sense, when a woman is constantly going at you, constantly saying this and that, what you should be doing, what you need to be doing, what you forgot to do. In a sense, for some men, it stops them from being comfortable, relaxed. In a sense, a woman that's constantly nagging would keep certain men on their toes. Because in order to avoid the nagging, the arguments, the loudness, the noise, her just going on and on and flipping on, some men would just say, you know what, fine, fine. Let's do this, I'll do that, let's just stop the flipping noise. But you see, the thing is, for however small the nag is, it's not about any one moment of the going on, the pressuring, her pressuring you. It's not just about any one moment in time. It's about the collective, the collective nagging. Let me use this as an example. Imagine a canvas, the canvas being you. At the moment, it's a blank canvas. Yet, with every nag, with every argument, comes a stroke of paint. So one dab of paint here, a few strokes over there, doesn't matter. Just a woman being a woman. Okay. But over time, those few strokes eventually start to form a picture. Because that picture is now a result of all the nagging, all of the arguments, all of the accusations, all of the lies, all of the constant going on and on, all of the belittling, making you feel less of a man, making you feel as if you're not even a man, or that you're not even a good enough man. Now in front of you, you see a full painted picture. What is the picture? I have no idea. That's your picture, the picture formed between you and the woman. But for some men, the end result of every single stroke of paint has been a canvas of crap. Well painted, yes. Fine details. But a collection, a combination of crap that you as a man or many men have suffered with over a period of time. And the thing is, some men reach a point where they just say, F it. F it. I'm done. Just F it. Look, woman, take yourself and go and do something. Because you're giving me nothing but headache stress, noise. Some men wonder how life isn't even bad. Things are okay. 
But yet for some reason, women seem to find something, something out of nowhere. In a sense, for some men, they feel as if certain women don't like when nothing's happening. In a sense, when there's no drama. In a sense, when things are calm and relaxed and too tranquil. In a sense, for certain women, they're not comfortable unless they're nagging you. They're not comfortable unless they're keeping you on your toes. In a sense, constantly being in your mind to make sure that you don't step out of line. So you have to look at it as controlling because that's what it is. It is a method of control, of manipulation, of dominance and abuse. Now some would say, hold on fish, hold on fish, abuse, you're going a bit too far there. Am I? Am I really? The fact that a woman could nag a man to death is a reality. That's not fairy tale. That's not fantasy. That's real. Because understand this, it's not the fact that she's just talking a man to death. That's not the point. It's the result of her talking to him to death. Those words, each dab and stroke of paint, those arguments, the belittling, it's all of those things combined that could weaken a man. Weaken his heart, his pride, his will to be, his desire to improve, destroy his self-confidence, shatter his self-esteem, diminish any dominance he ever had or could possibly have. And the strain and the pressure for many creates depression, puts them in a place of feeling alone in their relationship, as if there's no one there though she's there all the time, nagging. And for some men, they reach a place of such darkness that there, there's no way out. And some men just give up. Some have the energy and the ability to leave the woman and give up on her. But for some, they just give up on everything because they see no point to anything. And think about this as well. Men do so much to maintain a relationship. Obviously, if he's trying to maintain it and he cares about the woman. But men do so much, they give so much, commit so much. And once again, some men's commitment is underestimated and taken for granted. Because when some men commit, they commit everything, everything they have. Because for many men, the programming is to give. To make a woman happy, give her everything you have and can possibly give her. To make her happy. Oh, she's nagging, she's nagging. Be quiet. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah? So for many men, they have no resistance. They have no challenge in them. They have no pushback. All they have is acceptance. And they will accept and take everything a woman's saying to them. All the while, crushing and destroying him. So why do women nag men? As I've said before, control. A man that can't be nagged at, be shouted at, be screamed at. A man that won't be submissive. For some women, that is an appealing challenge. But for many women, that's not a man they can control. Many men genuinely try to make their woman happy. For some men, all they've known is to try to make her happy. Because he cares so much about her. She means so much. And for many men, with the care comes the desire to please, to make happy, to satisfy. But within that desire, within that want that many of us as men have or had, <laughs> had, it's in those moments where many men are taken for granted and taken advantage of. And it then becomes a sense of, what am I doing? Am I just here to be your tool? To be your accessory? Am I just here to be something to make your life better? Because I seem to be doing more for you than you're willing to do for me. It's as if you don't see that my wants exist or make sense. The world is a cold place, but nowhere near as cold as some people in the world. And yes, you can say both sexes, men and women, of course. As it should be stated, both. Focus. Observe. Remember. The world is yours. Have.
a nice day. <laughs>